<laughs> I'm still gonna fall asleep. Easy, wild thing. I made mine sleep too. I made Jeff. Mikey go in there. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about those? Yeah. Hey you all, welcome back to Promote the Goat Homestead. As you saw, we just got some new chicks today. I think it's been three years since we've had a batch of chicks. But these guys are all going to replace the chickens and the ducks that we have now. Um, we got home, kind of home later than I expected to be. And so we grabbed some lunch and now I'm going to head to our local feed store and I'm going to pick up some uh, chick feed and then we will get those guys all set up in the barn. So let's head and go get some feed. baby chicks they've been here I want to say a week ago yesterday yeah I think it was a week ago yesterday that we got them they are doing great we unfortunately lost two um, the following day uh, kings were willing to replace those and so um, we took those back and then the two new ones are doing great so everybody's doing great um, I'll try to insert some footage and see um, you guys can see what they look like they're really starting to get some feathers on their wings um, they're doing really well. Um, instead of just posting a short video, I thought I would go ahead and show you what I am doing today in the kitchen. Yesterday I got a giant, and I say giant, like I mean giant box of chicken frames, which is what is left of the chicken after it has been uh, well, butchered. So oh, you after you take the drumsticks, you know the thighs, the wings, the breast, um, just the bone carcass that is left after that. Um, I had that all in the giant box that I got yesterday and those are great for making stocks. That's what I have in this pot here. And then you saw in my larger pot, it's a four gallon pot. Um, I had several frames in that as well. And so I just took those out of the pot. They're over here cooling on a baking sheet because there's quite a bit of meat left on that. So I'm going to take that meat off and today I'm going to make a broccoli rice chicken casserole. <laughs> Somebody's ready for a nap, but I'm trying to keep them awake just a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to make that for dinner tonight, and then I'm also going to go ahead and make one that I can throw in the freezer for later. Um, so right here I have my chicken stock, and I'm going to go ahead and strain that in here. And this chicken stock I'm going to use to make my rice. Um, just because this pot is already dirty, after I get this strained out, I'm going to cook my rice in this. Um, so I'm not dirtying another pot. And then I will also use my chicken stock today to make a white sauce. Um, so let's go ahead and get this strained out, and then we will make our rice. I use four cups of cooked rice for each, each casserole. Um, so that would be two cups of dried rice. Um, so I need four cups total of dried rice. And you might ask, are you trying to help? You might like wonder, well, why are you using chicken stock? Well, I'm using this because A, it adds more flavor, and two, it's gonna make this, it's gonna add more nutrition. Yes, you can use water. There's nothing wrong with water. I've used that lots of times. But this is something I have on hand and it's just going to add, like I said, extra nutrition, extra flavor to the dish that I'm making. Um, if the chicken stock is something that you want to incorporate more into your diet, 
or your family's diet, this is a good way to do it is to cook things in it. For instance, like rice, beans, uh, noodles or pasta. It's just a good way to add, um, you know, the extra nutrition without necessarily having to eat soup or drinking it by itself or something like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and measure this because if I talk and measure, I'm probably going to mess it up, especially since I have a half cup measure. Are you trying to help? I think with instant pot recipes, when you look it up, I don't think you have to do the two to one ratio. However, that's what I've always stuck to. It always works. Um, you cook rice. If you've done it in an instant pot, you cook it how you like to cook it. That's how I like to cook it. Um, so I still stick with the two to one ratio if I were still to do it on the stove top. So I'm gonna go ahead and add um, eight cups of my chicken stock here. So this whole half gallon. Mommy's dribbling here. And then I'm going to go ahead and get in my Instant Pot. I'm going to get in, I'm going to get in my Instant Pot and then uh, get this cooked up. And then while that's going, I'm going to start shredding chicken. Uh, it's a little bit later in the day um, before I got to the chicken, but I got that all done. Um, so I'll show you here what's left of the bones. And then here's all the chicken that I got. Um, I'm hoping that is enough. I've still got a few of the carcasses over there in my pot, but I'm hoping this is enough between the two. We'll see. I'll definitely get the one for dinner done um, before I get the freezer one done. So next, I'm going to go ahead and get some broccoli on the stove. And then once that is cooked through, then I'm going to um, use that same pot, same pot um, to make my white sauce. Um, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. Yeah, hi! <laughs> I went ahead and I got um, a pan, a 9 by 13 out. That's what's um, what we're going to use for dinner. Um, for the one I'm going to put in the freezer, I lined a 9 by 13 with parchment paper, but I'm going to mix all this in my Instant Pot first before I put it in that because I'm afraid that um, parchment paper isn't going to do very well if I mix it in the dish. However, I think I'm a little overly ambitious in what I'm trying to fit in this 9x13 because usually I put it all in there and I just mix it in there. Um, I can show you. That just looks really full. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is put it all, um, mix the one in my Instant Pot first and then put that one for my freezer meal. And then um, after I get everything out of the Instant Pot, then I will... Um, Put everything that's in the 9x13 in that pot, mix it all together, then stick it back in the 9x13. But I went ahead and divided up my rice. I put my broccoli in there. I went ahead and added some peas as well just for a little bit more greenery. Um, next, I'm going to work on my sauce. It's super easy. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll set up my camera so that way you guys can see it. And then we'll just finish assembling. Um, but I'll try to talk you through it as I'm doing it. Okay, I am, you have to keep in mind, I am doubling my recipe since I'm using two of them. Um, so I'm going to be adding a whole stick of butter to this instead of the four tablespoons I would usually do. Um, we're just going to let this butter melt. And this is the same pot that I used uh, for my broccoli. And all I did is I just rinsed it out and then I put it back on the stove. So we'll get this all melted up. Probably got this over mm, just a hair past medium heat. Okay, now that our butter is all melted, I'm gonna add some flour. And it, this is equal parts butter and flour. Um, so I'm gonna add a half a cup of flour. I usually do like a heavy, um, either quarter of a cup or half a cup, depending on how much I'm making. Um, and then you just wanna mix this together real good. This is called a roux. This is what we're making. So it's gonna form like a paste. And you wanna let this just cook for a little bit. And this is gonna help get rid of that raw flour taste. Um, you know, just mix it in real good. Just stir it every once in a while if you'd like. Uh, that just keeps it from burning on the bottom. So we're just gonna cook this for a minute or two and then we'll move on to the next step here. This has been going for a couple of minutes. Um, so now I'm gonna add my chicken stock in just a little bit at a time. And as that chicken stock heats up, it's going to start to thicken in my pot. I 
Usually I don't measure this, however you can. Um, for the original recipe that I got this from, you would use, again, equal parts. So if this was for just a single batch, it would be a quarter cup of flour, a quarter cup of butter or four tablespoons, and then it would be three cups of your liquid, whether that be uh, milk or chicken stock or beef stock, um, whatever it is that you have on hand. But sometimes I like to add a little bit less, usually around like two to two and a half cups. And that just kind of gives me a thicker sauce. If I want it more liquidy, you know, you can always add more. But I tend to do between two and two and a half cups or just by eyeballing it, um, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing right now, just kind of eyeballing it. And this sauce, this would be like a substitute for the can of cream of mushroom soup that you get from the store. This I also use if I'm making like chicken alfredo. This is a very versatile sauce. Um, you can use just milk. If that's all that you have, that is fine. I just tend to like to use the chicken stock just because it gives a little bit more depth of flavor. And you see this is thickening up and as it keeps cooking, it's just gonna keep getting thicker. And I'll just keep adding liquid to it. And then um, when you're done, with uh, it's at the consistency that you want you want to season it i like to add salt pepper and garlic um, depending on what i make if it was alfredo i would add parmesan cheese to it um, just kind of whatever whatever suits your fancy is what you would want to add to this flavor wise and make sure that you taste it too because you can always add seasoning and then you don't add enough which is kind of what i'm guilty of doing so i always make sure that i taste it and then just adjust as needed so I'm going to go ahead and um, finish this up and then we will start assembling. Well, I successfully got most of it in the pot without making a giant mess. I don't know if I have enough sauce here and I think the one that I just poured into the casserole dish could also use a little extra sauce. But I'm going to stir this up and see what it looks like and if all else fails I will make more. I just really would prefer not to since I'd like to get this in the oven but we'll see. To stir it up and see how it looks. Yeah, I think this one needs some more sauce too. So I will go ahead and knock that out real quick. Okay, I went ahead and made more sauce. Um, got all this in the pan. This dish has been buttered. Now I'm going to add some cheese to it. Uh, this is just regular cheddar cheese. Um, we like extra sharp, but you can put whatever you want on top. I had to laugh at myself when I was editing my last video. Here, buddy. And didn't think about it until I was editing it, and I used one of the kids' plates. You want some cheese? But I like to use this plate when I grate cheese because it's got this lip on it, so it holds it really well, but I thought that was kind of funny. Oh, is that good cheese? Got my little helper here. Come here. Are you a little mousy? So I'm gonna get all this cheese um, on here, and then next we'll add the crackers. But let me get this cheese on here first. I've also made this dish with zucchini as well in place of the broccoli, and that was really good. But you really could use whatever you want. I think mushrooms added to this would be good as well. Now I'm just going to take crackers and crumble this up across the top. Mommy, I like the video when you're done. Sure. Yay! And I'm going to do this across the whole thing here. Okay, I went ahead and I got uh, the rest of the cheese on there. I got the crackers crumbled up on there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the oven at 350. It will bake for uh, 30, 40 minutes maybe, just till everything's heated through and it's bubbly. Uh, for the other one that I did that I'm going to throw in the freezer, I'm going to stick it in there overnight. I'm just going to add the cheese to it. I'll wait to add the cracker topping on the day that I get this out for dinner. Um, 
But I'm gonna stick it in the freezer. Tomorrow when I get it out, I will pop it out of my pan and I'll wrap it up in a saran wrap or plastic wrap and then cover that in foil and label it and back into the freezer it'll go. That way it frees up my nine by 13 that it froze in and then I don't have to use an aluminum foil pan because in my opinion, those are kind of pricey. So uh, this is my way of avoiding doing that. And then because it froze in a nine by 13, it'll fit perfectly back into one, at least I hope so, fingers crossed since I've never tried this. Um, they'll fit back into one on the day that I want to bake that for dinner. Uh, that is it for today. I thank you for joining me in the kitchen. And um, I got to show you a recipe that used a lot of chicken stock and just a great way, like I said, to incorporate into your diet. Um, especially in the summertime, if you're not in the mood for soup, which most people aren't, this is a good way to do that without having to eat soup. Um, that is it for today, I guess. And again, I thank you. Uh, if you like what you saw today and want to see other cooking videos or homesteading or gardening, feel free to subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.